Y'all can be seated. Thank y'all so much for the warm welcome. I love your pastors. Pastor Mark, thank you so much for always being hospitable to me. We do have a lot of stories. Some I will tell, some I won't. But I was telling Brother Rick in the back, I was telling him, I said, I always, I don't think that Pastor Rod Parsley really knew what he was doing by teaming us up together. <laughs> we did him a lot of good, but they don't tell him what kind of harm we did him too. But, and I was talking to one of my friends last night, and they were asking me about what I was doing here in Lexington. Thank, first of all, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Stephanie, for allowing me to come and trust me with this platform. Um, but I was talking to a friend of mine, and I was telling him that I had met Pastor Dalton and his wife in Bible school. And um, you got to understand, when I went to World, can I just be West today? When I went to World Harvest, I had just completed one year in a program called Master's Commission. Have you ever heard of that? Tommy Barnett. And so I had just got out of jail for armed robbery. I know, don't let the suit fool you. It don't look right. It don't make sense. <laughs> but I, had, I, was, I was, well, I was charged with armed robbery, but I wasn't convicted. But they allowed me to go to... I think you may know him, Pastor Dalton, Pastor Randy Clark in Beaumont, Texas. He wrote a letter. He was one of my dad's bosom friends, and he wrote a letter to the judge. Now, this judge had trialed me since I was 13 years old. I was 18, and they were trying to trial me as an adult because right before I turned 18, I tried to rob somebody with an ax. Right, don't let the suit fool you. I'll cry in the church with you and fight in the street, whatever you want. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm just playing. I'm just serious. <laughs> so I was able to go to Texas and Beaumont and stay for one year on a trial period. And then if I messed up, then I was going to prison for a good while. And so... When I pause like that, it's just because I get emotional still about my testimony. That's what bothers me about people. They don't still get emotional about how where God brought them from. Some of us are suffering from amnesia. We need to remember where God found us. And, and so I went to school there, and Pastor Rod Parsley happened to be preaching um, right the night after my graduation. I made it one year. First year, I had been clean and sober since I was 11 years old. I started smoking cocaine and snorting cocaine when I was 13. And so I celebrated one year, and I graduated from Master's Commission, and Pastor Rob Parsley was preaching that night, and I sang. And he said, he looked over at my parents because he had met them in the back, and he says, what is he doing? after he graduates, and he says, I want to give him a full ride scholarship. Now, can I just be real with y'all? Can I just be real? I'm so sick of phony Christians who don't tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. They act like they've been squeaky clean all their life and just hope you never find out and Google them, you know what I'm saying, and thanks. And so I went to school, and I was telling my friend the whole story last night on the phone as I was driving here from Nashville. And I said, it was so amazing because God hooked me up with Pastor Dalton. And he schooled me and educated me and taught me. There's one thing about this pastor right here, you never see him sweat. Now, you may see him mad, but you don't see him sweat. <laughs> Y'all know I know him. Some of y'all saying, I know that's right. He will get mad on you real quick, but you rarely see him sweat. And so anyway, he taught me so much being on the road, and then we, he, he just kind of took me under his wing. And then, um, and then I made this statement, and I have to give this accolade to my sis. I told my friend on the way up here, I said, his wife was one of my vocal directors, and she taught 
me how to use proper vocal technique and breathing. And she was a stickler on it too. Have y'all, have y'all ever, she don't sing like she used to. She used to sing that. I mean, she got a classical voice. And I just want to say how much I love y'all. And I thank y'all for pouring into me. I am product of your labor, whether you want to acknowledge it or not or identify with it or not, I don't know. But the truth is in the pudding. I, I just have been through so much in my life. And I was thinking the other, I was thinking the other day, I was saying, you ever been going through so much where you say, like, why am I even doing this anymore? I mean, why, why am I trying? Nobody else around me is trying. Why am I trying? You ever been there before? I'm just being honest with you. Y'all know y'all gonna get the truth from the west side. And I was just thinking here a while back, I said, you know, I don't have to do this. God has favored me and fortuned me and afforded me so many opportunities. I don't have to do this. And I began to think, and you know, you have those moments. Can I just be transparent, y'all? You have those moments where you say, you know, God, I'm just tired. We got hell going on at home, hell going on on the streets, going on the road. You got kids, you got things going on. Whatever your thing may be, it's going, right? And for a moment, Pastor Dalton, I began to kind of decline in my spirit concerning doing what I've been doing. And I began to think about it and I said, Who's going to tell him Jesus loves him? Who's going to tell him there's a better way? And who's going to warn him about the things coming on him so God can turn their lives today? Can I say it one more time? Who's gonna tell him Jesus loves him? See, sometimes I think people look at us on the stage and they see what we do and they think that we just do this because we want to all the time. But the truth of it is, is we have no choice. We have been mandated. You have been mandated. Now you are, you've got to be accountable for what you've heard. And I just can't give up my testimony. I've been through too much, you know what I'm saying? To give up my testimony because now he's making a message out of my madness. Can I say it one more time? Who's gonna tell them? Jesus loves him. Who's gonna tell them there's a better way? And who's gonna warn them about the things coming on? So God can turn their night today somebody's got a warning yeah somebody's gotta tell them mm, oh yeah somebody's gotta warn them please take all the gates and compressors off my mic give me a little bit more somebody's gotta tell them so can I get a witness from anybody in here today? So won't say, say, who's gonna tell him Jesus loves him? Who's gonna tell them there's a bad way? Who's gonna warn him about the things coming on him so God can turn them? Come on, help me right here. Who's gonna 
in the day Somebody's gotta turn Somebody's gotta hold Somebody Somebody gotta open up your heart and tell them, y'all Somebody gotta hold I just do it like the West Side. Ah, ah, tell Say it. Ah, 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 Talk to you. God showed me your face last night. That's good. I just want to speak to you for a minute. God showed me your face. I told my friend as I was telling him about my story I told y'all earlier. Y'all ride with me today. I said, God showed me two faces. And he showed me your face. And when I come in here this morning, got on the platform, I picked up on your face. There's some people that's really dependent on your story. You've been through a lot, bro. Do you mind me asking how old you are? 43? You're younger than me. You know, we can go through life and life can just harass us sometimes. And I see it in the spirit. You have been so harassed, but God said, I have allowed some things to go on in your life because there's some people who need to hear you tell about it. I'm going to tell them. You got to tell them that there's a better way. You got to warn them about the things that's coming on them. So God can turn their life today. Take my hand, my brother. You're gonna be the one to tell them Jesus loves him. You're gonna be the one to tell them there's a better way. You're gonna warn them about the things coming on them so God can turn their life. Today. You receive that? That's all I wanted. I don't call myself a prophet, but when I feel something, I see something, I gotta do it. Can I sing it one more round, y'all? I got a good word for you, but let me do this one more time. I'm gonna tell them about Jesus loving them. I 
know though you was my teacher. You, I, you, I, you, you gonna judge me if I don't preach today. I, I feel the Holy Ghost in this room so strong. I feel the Holy Ghost in this room so strong. If you can't burn up with the Holy Ghost today, your wood is wet. You need to get up on your feet and tell God, I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him. I'm going to be a witness. He never called us to be a judge, but he said, be a witness. Be ye witnesses into all the world. But I'm, I'm just, I asked the Lord the other day, I said, Lord, why do you put me through so much? He said, because you come closer when I put you through stuff. Let me do it one more time. I'm going to tell you what, this band is hot now. And that song y'all was singing, Never Let Me Go, bro, I appreciate that anointing. That blessed my heart. We're gonna have to do something together. Y'all can't do no recording without me. Huh? Yeah, everybody point at Bishop and, and, and sis right quick and say, don't y'all do it without him. Lord, whatever you do in this season, don't do it without don't do it without me oh lord whatever you're doing in the season don't do it without me please don't do it without me hey, lord if you're here Don't do it without me. Come on, y'all. Oh, Lord, if you're blessing, blessing in this season, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Come on, say it. Lord, if you do it, Lord, whatever you do it, whatever you do it in this season, don't do it.
Shanda robo siki ana mo shanda la mo siki. The Lord would say to all of us, I'm bringing you back to your first love. Had to cut some relationships off. Don't think it's rejection. I just don't want you carrying no hitchhikers in where I'm taking you. I broke you out to bring you through. You know, the interesting thing, are y'all okay standing right now? If you want to sit, you can. You know how I flow. I'm totally unorthodox. You know, when Jesus, I got to do this because it's Palm Sunday. And I just, will y'all indulge me just for a second? This is good. Palm Sunday, I began to look into that and do some studying on it. And the thing that was so, so interesting, intriguing to me is that how Jesus chose a wild donkey, which was really humiliating for a king to ride in on. That's right, stallions. And he come riding in on that donkey. And do you realize that the people who was getting ready to crucify him were waving palm branches? Now, what you got to understand, they were crying Hosanna, but what you got to understand about the palm branch is the palm branch, if you study it, it is prophetic. And as they were waving that palm branch over him and worship him and celebrating him, they were still prophesying what God was about to do, not only to him, but through him. And can I tell you today that what God has done to you or what God has allowed to be done to you, he will use it and move it through you. Now, I don't make no beans about it. I'm not arrogant. I am confident. And I've been taught well. Did I do okay, Pastor Stephanie? I'm a vocalist. I know how to sing. But I get called more for the hell that I went through and my testimony than I ever get called to sing. Because people need a hero. People need to know that you went through the same thing, if not worse, than what they went through and still come out smelling like a rosebud. Look at somebody and say, I'm so glad I don't look like what I've been through. Oh, I wish I had somebody who's not suffering from spiritual amnesia and has not forgotten where God found you. He snatched you out of the sign over you. Well, you will not live like you used to live. And for some of you, the way you're living right now, you will not. I'm prophesying over you right now. I'm waving a spiritual palm branch over you right now. You may go through hell and you may go through death, but it'll only be to bring you closer to God. I wish I had two or three people in here say, I'm going to tell them and whatever I have to go through, God, I know you're going to use it for your glory. Y'all say, grab Psalms 27. I want to walk y'all through this chapter. Will y'all let me do that? I had to get my brother to come over here and blow up my font. I forgot my good readers. These old raggedy things right here ain't helping me none. So if you would, put that, can you put that? Thank y'all so much, man. Y'all are amazing. Give it up for the band, man. These are missions. Appreciate it, everybody. Y'all stick around as long as you want, whatever you want to do. If you need to take a water break, whatever. I'll be back here in a minute. We'll hit the mountain in a minute. God 
God really gave me some insight on this scripture. It's a Psalm, it's a Psalms 27. Let's just go right into it. Are y'all ready for the word? I've been losing some weight lately. I think it's just stress. That's all it is. Jesus is here though. I want you to just mark in your Bible, even if, you, if you're writing notes or putting it in your phone, just mark this scripture because I'm going to reference it, but I won't read it. I may read it. I don't know what I'll do, but I'm on, I want you to mark it. 2 Samuel chapter 21 and verse 17. Just put that down for right now, okay? And then let's go to Psalms 27. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. First of all, we just thank you that you invite us into your presence and you bless us and you strengthen us, you rejuvenate us, you give us everything that we need, everything that we need. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. So Father, right now, because you are our provider, we're not looking for, for physical things. We're looking for spiritual food. Father, please feed our spirits and our souls with your incredible word as we are very intently and consecrated. We're ready to listen to what you have to say. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, if you're ready for the word, say, preach, preacher. All right, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I can't help it. God gave me some stuff on this, so I'm going to be a little dramatic. Can I be dramatic today? Let's be the house uh, husbands of Atlanta or, or Lexington. I'm going to be dramatic today. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I? I mean, I could just preach on that one phrase right there. In other words, are you serious? The Lord is my light and my salvation. You think I'm worried about you? You think I'm going to give you my energy when I know my resources? You think I'm going... Oh, I feel like preaching. I ain't got through the first phrase yet. Jesus, help me today. Jesus, would you help me, Jesus? I had a situation back when I first started in the music industry. This gentleman, if I called his name, you probably know him. I'm not going to do that. He was very, very influential and affluential in the industry. And I was just elated to have him just show any interest in what I was doing. I was first starting out, he wanted to manage me. So I said, okay, let's, let's go. So we signed the contract. He got 20% of everything. I'm giving y'all the short end, but I'm going somewhere with this. Look at somebody say, he's going somewhere. Just right on the west side. Uh, but um, what was I saying? I smoked a lot of weed back in the day. My mind freezes up on me sometimes. So if you see me looking dumb, just say, he'll be right back. Just give him a second. So he wanted 20% of everything I made yet while he was sitting in the office. And I was traveling all over the world, worn out, away from my kids. And then I began to find out that he was taking money from me. on this. So I just sent him a letter, cease and desist. And I was riding down the road, I'll never forget, I was riding down the road on Interstate 24, headed to Atlanta from Nashville, I was going to do a show. And one of my buddies who was very, very into the industry and knew the who's who's, and he, we were riding down the road and he said, what's going on with you and, I won't call his name, what's going on with you and, uh, what's his name? And um, he said, uh, I said, man, I'm done with that. I'm not sitting around, I'm not running all over the country away from my kids, away from my wife, running over here doing everything he's telling me to do while he sits in the office and gets 20. Can I get a witness? And so I told him that, I told my friend that, Pastor Dalton, he looked at me and said, man, you don't know who you're messing with. He said, do you realize who that is? I'm still on my first phrase, y'all, but I promise you I'm going to tie it all up in the boat here in a minute. He said, do you realize who that is, man? You don't want to go to court with him. And I just paused. I said, sir, do you realize I've been going to court since I was 13 years old? <laughs> Armed robbery charges and things. Assault charges, <laughs> drug trafficking. And you think I'm worried about he? <laughs> now let me go back to my first phrase. Y'all got it? 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I just wish I had somebody in the building that had a revelation that if God be for me, y'all ain't ready for me today. Look at somebody and say, if God be for me, tell me who can, whom shall, you think I'm worried about your pump? Look at somebody with a little attitude. You ain't got to holler at them, but just look at them and say, I got the Lord on my side, baby. Y'all pardon my hair. I'm doing a little new thing. I'm trying it, okay? I didn't use enough hairspray. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, when the haters... Even my enemies and my foes came up on me to eat up my flesh. Don't you know that the Lord will allow the enemies to reduce the amount of flesh in your life? Sometimes your enemies are necessary. Okay? All right, we're going. We're moving. We're moving. They stumbled and fell. Somebody say stumbled and fell. Y'all know the difference, right? Stumble is this. Falling, I ain't going to do that. But he said, they sunk. when they came up against me, the chosen one, God's inheritance, I, I'm a child of God. When they come up on me, they stumbled, which first of all meant they lost their swag. <laughs> Anybody stumbled in public? You know what I mean? You just try to. Flip it off like you would, you know what I'm saying, like just shaking your foot. You know what I'm talking about. First of all, the enemy is going to lose their swag for messing with you. That's a word for somebody right there. The enemy, the people who tried to come up against you are about to lose their cool because they mess with the favorite choke. I wish I had somebody in here. I wish I had somebody in here that has a revelation. I'm chosen, baby. You can't just be coming up on me any kind of way. You don't understand. I'm called. I'm chosen. I'm favored. I'm blessed when I come. I'm blessed when I go. Who got the wrong one, honey? I wish you would. Come right across that line. I'll be like my dear. I wish you would. It's, it's right there. Look at it, somebody and say, baby, my enemies mess with me, but they are raggedy. They ain't got no swag. They should have known before they come up on me that they were going to get a whooping. Do I have some more time? Whew. So they stumbled and fell, though an host should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. Quit allowing the enemy to harass you. The war should rise against me in this. I will be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple, for in the time of trouble he shall hide me. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me and he shall set. I want y'all to pay attention to this text because I'm coming back to tie all this up here in just a second. He shall set my feet, set like concrete. That means you unmovable. He shall set my feet up on a rock and nail my head. I love what Paul said. Paul said it's with the mind that we serve the Lord. He said, and now my head shall be lifted above my enemies. Look at somebody say, all you got to do is get your head out of it. That raggedy relationship you've been trying to make work for 10 years, or just get your head out of it. Because you get your head out of it, the rest of the body will come. So this Psalms 27 was written right after a very important story you have to know about in 2 Samuel. I think I gave y'all the scripture. But if you will, for the sake of time, I'm just going to talk. Y'all trust me? So David and, his, and his, uh, his, his guys, his soldiers and things, 
of his ride or dies. They went out to war with the Philistines. And during the war, David was in the battle, and the Bible teaches that he grew faint. And when he grew faint, one of the sons of a huge giant, and it gives all the information if you want to go back and read it, he saw David growing faint. And you know, David was a bad boy. He was a bad, bad boy. Let me tell you something. That boy right there, you didn't want to mess with David. He even said in one scripture, he said, God, teach my fingers to war. In other words, the smallest members that I have teach my finger to. And I don't have time to get into all that. But in this story, the soldier ran after David to take him out because they saw him faint. Well, one of David's boys, that's why you always need a good ride or die. You know what I'm saying? Don't be fooling around with all these fickle people talking about they like you while you're on the mountaintop. Don't, don't, uh, don't be worried about them. But David's guy ran over and he intercepted the attack. They went back to the camp. And when they got back to the camp, David's boys, they said, no longer will you go out to camp. I go out to war, excuse me. Lest the lamp of Israel be quenched. Well, you got to understand, David was a fighter. You don't tell a fighter he can't fight no more. That's why you got Holyfield getting back up in the ring and 60-something years old. Come on, bro. It was good while it lasted. David gets back to camp and they start telling him what he can and can't do. And you're not going out to war with us because you almost got killed. And, and if something happened to you, then the whole lamp of Israel will be quenched and all that stuff. And David wrote this song. After they gave him the spill and tried to tell him that they were the reason why he lived through the war, through the battle, he begins to set the story straight. And he says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. In other words, if you hadn't been there, he would have used somebody else. Be careful about people who give you gifts with receipts. I'm going to say it one more time. Just so I'm going to sit this side and listen to it. Be careful about people who remind you about how they were there for you when you were on your back and now they feel like you owe them the rest of your life because they were there in a moment of time. Can I get a witness in here? Don't get it twisted, baby. If God had not had you, he would have used another ram in the bush. So don't start thinking that I owe you because you happen to be in the place at the right time and God used you. I told somebody the other day, I don't need, see, I, growing up as a juvenile, going to juvenile detention every weekend, my mom and dad would drop me off on Friday evenings after school. They'd get me a meal, drop me off at juvenile detention because I had so much time to spend because of my crazy self. And they would drop me off on Friday nights and I'd get out on Sunday nights just so I could go to school from Monday to Friday and go right back and do the same thing. I did like 20 weekends. But when you're a juvenile, you can't be in general public population. You got to be secluded. It's called solitary. Solo. And when you have a revelation of who God is in your life, you don't mind riding solo. You know what I'm saying? I get frustrated with these people who always got to have an entourage. They all got to have a whole group of people. Enjoy you some me time. I love me some me. I got a 68 Mustang 22s on the back. Drop top. I know a brother owned that thing before I bought it because the shoulder leaned right in place. I do the prison ministry all over the world, and I just love it because when I go out on the yard, this is one, this, this one prison, Tennessee prison for women, uh, when I go out on the yard, hit it to the chapel, I preach this message called Ride It Out. Because one day I was riding down the road in that 68 Mustang, I was going through hell, I said, just ride it out. I put me on some Marvin Gaye, I just said, 
Y'all figure it out. Look at somebody say, just ride out. So when I go out on the yard at the prison, all of them say, Pastor, we riding it out. Look at somebody say, I'm riding it out. I might be going through hell right now, but I'm riding this mug out, baby. I can do bad all by myself. You don't have to celebrate me. I'll go down to the market, get my own birthday cake mix, make my own birthday cake, put whatever cover icing I want on it. Happy birthday, Wes Morgan. Put a candle in it, blow it out, and make a wish. But if you think I'm going to sit around and wait on somebody to tell me how great I am, listen, I stop putting my gift about men and ask them to validate what God put in me. That's, I'm going to tell you, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost and I come to help somebody. It's Palm Sunday. It's time for souls to be turned around. Listen, it's time for you to get your mind right. Quit messing around with people who will never make up their minds about you, honey. Get them off the wagon. Get them out your car. Get them off your recliner. It's easy to move them in, but it's hard to move them out. Some of y'all got some people sitting at your house right now drinking your milk, drinking your coffee. You can't even go home and watch your favorite TV show because they sitting up in your recliner. Listen, tell them I want all y'all out. Get out. This is my house. And some of you need to serve some eviction notices on the enemy and say you ain't coming in and out of my house anytime you want to. You got the wrong one. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm set apart. I'm chosen. I'm anointed. I'm favored. Somebody take 30 seconds and give God a praise in here. High five two or three people around you say, baby, I know where I'm going. All right, sit down. We're just talking. We're just dating right now. We're going to get married later. So David said, listen, y'all, you leave me alone. Don't y'all come in here and start trying to run my game. This, I'm the king, David. I'm the general around here. And, 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 and so they started doing it. So David said, you know, I'm telling you, what I love about it is it says, I'm going to give y'all a couple more points and I'm going to leave this because I have to get another date to come back. So I'll do part two next time. But I'm going to give you a little tease. Remember, I told my dad, my dad years ago, Pastor Dalton, you know, my dad, he's got so much word in him. He just teach and teach and teach. I said, Dad, remember Mick Jagger? You got to give him an encore. Leave him wanting for the last hit. So I'm going to leave y'all wanting for the last hit so I can come back for the encore later. I'm just serious. <laughs> Where was I? So, so David, what I love about this, David says, so though an army encamp about me, though war may rise up against me, he says, my heart shall not fear. What a revelation. I wonder how many people have gone before us because they could not regulate the fear in their heart. I love the scripture where David, he was getting ready to go into Ziklag and his family was taken. He went to God and said, shall I go and fight? And God said, yes, you shall and you will recover all. But the Bible teaches that all his men that he'd just gotten done fighting with were ready to stone him. And the Bible says he went and encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, you can't, ex you can't really value encouragement until you understand what discouragement is. Discouragement, the definition of discouragement, one of them, is that you have lost the ability to control fear in your life. That's what discouragement is. When you have gotten to the place where you cannot control fear. Pastor Dalton, I know you know it. You've counseled them so many times. People are just being harassed. You got to get to a place where you say, if God be for me, who can be again? I wish I had a Palm Sunday sermon. I tried to give y'all a little prelude, but I'm trying to tell you today, I got to get this word in you. You at this season and Palm Sunday need to get an ultimate revelation that I know he's for me. No matter what kind of business deal I'm trying to do, 
Let me go back to my sermon because time's running on me. So David, he says, though an army encamp about me, my heart shall not fear. Somebody say this with me. I will not allow fear, intimidation to control me. I shall control intimidation and fear in my life. I'm a child of God, and I don't have to put up with it. I don't have to put up with this. I don't have to go to a home today that's full of strife. I'm going home to peace. Mm. All right, let me get this last point. My son Malachi, he's six four. I, I had to check the milk, man. I, just to be sure. I'm just kidding. I'm I'm just kidding. But he's got a lot of height on him, and we didn't have no height on either side. So you've been wondering why I asked that question. But anyway, he was my he is mine. And I like to have fun, y'all. I'm not coming to church and getting dressed up and putting a bow tie on to come in here and be looking all stiff and bored and things. If I'm going to come out here and look good for somebody, I'm going to have me some fun. So my son Malachi, he's a beast on the basketball. I never played best. I never played ball at all. I boxed growing up, golden gloves, but I never played ball. But now that my kids are playing, I just am, I love it. And so we were out at one of his games, and, and they don't want him. What do they call that shot where they fade? Is it called a fade? Fade away beast. And so they don't want him to have that ball. So in this game, they were playing this tournament, and every time Malik would get the ball, they would foul him. Just they, they did, because they'd rather foul him than to have him on that three-pointer. And so they kept fouling, and I, you know, with Daddy, I'm sitting on the sideline. I'm like, is this a referee? If you don't get it, Jesus, help me. <laughs> don't get it twisted. This little white boy come out and you're crazy. <laughs> so they just kept fouling him and fouling him and fouling him. And, uh, and, 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 and so I got frustrated. And then I, I learned a great lesson, though, by watching this. Are y'all enjoying this or am I boring y'all? I can go home and tell this to myself in the mirror. I know it. <laughs> and so, uh, by the way, I'm going to have some product in the back to sell. If y'all want a CD, y'all come through. I'm running a special. <laughs> so, I, this is y'all going to love this. <clears throat> so I was watching my son. I was watching him being fouled over and over and over. Got frustrated. And then God spoke something to me. He brought me to the Old Testament where he said, and the peace of God shall rule and reign in your heart. The peace of God shall rule and reign. Now, when you look at rule and reign, it's translated as referee or an umpire. Y'all see where I'm going with this? Y'all ride down the road with me just for a second. It won't be long. And God spoke that to me, and I said, God, well, when, when is a rough, we're going to stop this mess? You ever had to ask me, say, God, when, when are you going to send that peace you were talking about over there? Did you know I'm getting, I'm getting older while I'm waiting? Some of y'all been waiting on your boy. Some of you single women holler back at me real quick. Y'all been waiting on your boy. You do have to tell God, you know I'm getting older now. I'm looking at these wrinkles and things. I got to tell y'all this one joke. I promise I'm almost quitting. There was this, my good friend, I was actually on the phone with her. Uh, she used to do BET comedy and stuff, but she did this, this comedy. She said, she said, you know, Wes, when I was young, she said, I had a long list of everything I wanted my man to be like. I want him to be fine, six foot something, thin, have a good job, take care of me, cook good. She said, but the longer I wait, she said, I look at that list and say, Jesus, don't worry about that. <laughs> you know what? This don't, he don't have to have a job. I'll pay the bills. I just need him, Jesus. Please send him, Jesus. I'll push him around him. 
I'm gonna quit. That's a good joke, though, right? I got one more time, just two more minutes for one more. This is so funny. There was this couple, and the man found out he was dying, and he told his wife, he said, he was a very wealthy man, he told his wife, he said, whatever you do, I want my money to be buried with me. And she was like, okay. And so they went to the funeral, and they were getting ready to drop the casket down and shut the top, and she said, hold on. She said, she went over and put a piece of paper in there, and so they shut the cast, drop it down, and the funeral director come over. This has nothing to do with my text. <laughs> but this laugh to do is good like a medicine. And so this is, this is good tips for all you married women who may have your husband decline a little bit. But anyway, um, so the funeral director went over after the funeral and said, ma'am, I noticed you put a piece of paper in there. And she said, well, my husband wanted all his money buried with him. And she said, I wanted to honor his request. I just cut him a check. <laughs> That's pretty good right there, though. You got to admit. Come on, y'all got to give me more doves than that now. That was two jokes, two for one. So Malachi, they, the referee calls in, and he, stops, and he stops the game. Now, this is, you got to pay attention to this. God gave me this. This is a revelation. Nobody gave me this. I was sitting there watching, and I watched because you got to understand, I don't have a lot of intellect concerning ball. So I watched my handsome, tall son go over there who had been humiliated by this team, and they go over there, and the first thing the referee peace, peace, referee, rule, peace, remember that? Y'all got that right? First thing the referee does is he stops the clock. All you need right now in your life is for God to just give you a pause. Just a moment to rejuvenate. To get my mind back together. To poise myself. Anybody ever been going through so much? You could just, God, if you could just stop time just for a minute. And the peace of God shall rule and reign. The peace, the referee come in and he stopped the clock. And then when he brought him over there, he got him at the key. And you know, when you got time on your side, you can get your swag back. And Malachi, I love what he does. He, he sits there and he looks around because now time is on his side because peace has stopped the clock. God's about to give you your cool back. Some of y'all been going through so much in your life. You've lost all your swag, but God said, I'm about to give you cool back because I'm stopping the clock so you can catch your breath. And, 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 and listen, he was standing, Malachi was standing, you could tell his whole demeanor changed because when you know God is on your side, your whole demeanor changes. You know, you know when somebody's really saved or not saved. You know what I'm saying? And he was standing there, he was bouncing the ball, he was throwing up and spinning. He was feeling himself. But what I love so much about this story and what God gave to me is when I read this in the scripture where David said, Though an army may encamp about me, though war may rise against me, my heart shall not fear. And I noticed the calmness on my son as he stood there knowing that everyone that fouled him in that game, every person that tried to stop him had to come and line up and be still. Don't be afraid, especially in this season. Listen to me, please listen to me. Do not be afraid to let your enemies have VIBC. Line them up and let them see the salvation of the Lord. Say, come on in here, baby. You're going to want to see this because you, oh, baby, you didn't want this to happen. So you need to come and witness this. You need to call all your enemies and say, come on in here, baby, because I'm about to be blessed in the presence of my, and that's why David said, though war may rise, man, army may encamp about me. He says, my heart's on fear. He said, because in the end, I win. Look at somebody say, in the end, I win. Can I just take a few minutes and preach just a little bit? Look at somebody. I wish you would step up on your feet and give me an amen corner right now. Look at somebody say, honey, you can't lose with the stuff I use. I'm too favored to go down in this season of my life. I've been through too much hell in my life to go down like this. I'm coming back 
if I gotta stretch my way out, if I gotta crawl my way, if I gotta fast my way, if I gotta pray my way. Look at somebody and take that finger, that finger, and look at them. Just like, don't hurt them. Just look at them and say, this is your season. This is your weekend. Come on, look at somebody and say, quit with all that nasty, look, draggedy face you got on your face. Tell your face to be happy. Look at somebody and say, tell your face to be happy. You got an inheritance. You got favor on your life. You blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. Bless when you come. Bless when you go. Somebody give him a praise in here. Somebody give him a praise in here. Ooh, Lord, Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost now. How about one more person say something? I'm coming out of this situation. I've been disappointed. I've been discouraged. But I'm coming out of comes in, understand three things. As God told me to tell somebody in here, well, if you want to receive it, receive it. If you don't, I, that's on you. I remember my grandmama, she was down, we down there from Mississippi. My mama, my grandmama cooked the baddest food you ever ate in your life. She didn't want nobody in her kitchen, but she would go in there, she would cook a meal and a half. And then she'd come in there, all us grandbabies and, and her sons and daughters. She'd say, the food's ready. If you leave hungry, it's your own fault. I just want to tell somebody that grandmama told me to tell you, if you leave hungry, it's your own fault. If you come out here on Palm Sunday and you don't get nothing out of this word, it's your own fault. I can't help you. I'm giving you what God gave me to give you. I need somebody to understand that this is your day of breakthroughs. But you can't break through till you break out. Hey! I feel the glory. Look at somebody and say, baby, you can't break through until you break out. Look at somebody say, break out of that situation. Get your head out of that situation. Get your emotions out of that situation. Get your life back. Get your peace back. I want it all back. Three things that happens when peace comes into your life. Catch my breath. <laughs> First of all, when peace comes into your life, expect a calmness to come into your life because the clock stops. Somebody says, How can you stop Kronos? You can stop Kronos when you serve Kronos. He is time. The beginning and the end. Time is running out on me, Pastor. I told you, just do this when you're ready for me to quit. That means if he's at the end of you, he can back up into the middle all the way back to Alpha because he is passing time and Kronos is passing time, but he's also Kairos time too. When he stops time and gives you a break, don't make excuses and don't procrastinate. Let me give you a definition of procrastination. Some of y'all going to want to write this down. Procrastination is the audacity and the arrogance 
to expect God to give you another chance to do something that you've had time to do. Procrastination is when you have the audacity and the arrogance to expect God to give you another chance that you had time to do. <laughs> it's time. The truth of it is, if you make up your mind right now that I'm ready for it to stop, I'm ready for this gener generational curse to be over with, if you make up your mind right now, he will stop time just like that. Matter of fact, there's some things and some assignments that the enemy has set against you today, and he's stopping it right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Three things. He stops time. Peace stops time. He makes your enemies watch your success. Always remember, success is sweeter than revenge. Quit fighting people who don't deserve a fight with you. Just because somebody picks a fight with you don't mean that they deserve a fight with you. Prize fighters don't fight for free. Look at somebody and say, don't fight for free no more. Enemy don't even deserve that energy that you would put into that fight. Who the, does he think he is? Can't demand my Fight? I'll fight you if I want to. First of all, there better be a prophet on the other side of it, so bring your purse with you. Because even if you beat me, I'm getting... <laughs> he stops time. He makes the people who said you would never make it watch you make it. And thirdly, he gives you what they gave to Malachi on that court. Free throw. If not two or three. Some of you are entitled to more than just one. Because all the hell you've been through in your life, God said, I'm not just going to give you one. I'm going to give you two. I'm going to give you three. For the Trinity. Hey, I'm a poet and didn't know it. Ah, God, I feel your presence. Let this word saturate our hearts and spirit today. God, give your people time to breathe. And every hater that they've had in their life that's tried to stop and block them. Let them see, not just because we want to say nah, 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 nah. But we want them to see what you can do for them like you did for me. Bless my people, God, my friends, this church. Let favor just saturate this ground. Father, we pray for just an influx of souls, God. We want to be ready for them when they come. Everybody lift up your hands real quick if you want to receive this blessing. Father, I speak blessings over every person that's in a receiving mode right now. I come against every generational curse and I ask that generational blessings will come and substitute, not substitute, but replace generational curses. We ask for blessings, generational blessings to, to replace generational curses in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we will not have to fight the devils that our grandfathers fought. Because you have broken this. In Jesus' name.